Dear students, I welcome you all to this session on hygiene and sanitation in food sector. In this session, we discuss on hygiene and sanitation in food sector and the general principles, the Codex Elementarius Commission's International Code of Practice regarding food hygiene, personal hygiene for staff members in the production areas, personal hygiene for staff coming in touch with the guest and food handling and servicing practices. Moving on to our first module, sanitation and hygiene are essential for a healthy and safe living. This is true especially for food hygiene. The food industry holds a very important position in today's world. This involves restaurants as well as fast food joints and small scale restaurants serving street food. Taking into consideration the huge population that this industry caters to, standardization is required in order to prevent the production and consumption of low quality unhygienic food. Agencies such as the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India FSSA as also the Hazardous Analysis Critical Control Point HACCP as well as the initiatives such as GFSI Global Food Safety Initiative have all been developed in order to set benchmarks for food safety standards. After all, the government, industry and consumers all play a role in safe sanitation and food hygiene practices. A large percentage of foodborne illness cases can be attributed to poor sanitation and food hygiene, including poor personal hygiene and contamination of equipment or environments. Our second module speaks about the Codex Elementarius Commission laid down on International Code of Practice concerning food hygiene. Some of the salient prerogatives are identify the essential principles of food hygiene applicable throughout the food chain including primary production through to the final consumer in order to ensure that the food is safe and suitable for human consumption. Recommend a hazard analysis critical control point HACCP based approach as a means to enhance food safety. Indicate how to implement those principles and provide guidance for specific codes which may be needed for the sectors of the food chain including the process and manufacturing of the commodities. All of this in order to amplify the hygiene requirements specific to those areas. When designing a food hygiene and sanitation program, a total supply chain approach is crucial. This means that every step in the process of producing food needs to be monitored with quality markers. The major areas that need to be covered are equipment, environment, air and water. A key point to be noted about these areas is that they function not as static entities but as a constantly evolving system. Each interacts with the other in a dynamic fashion and at the same time is subject to change from external agents. This is why a good food hygiene program will need to be responsive to changes in the plant environment and emerging risk. The same proactive approach used when developing HACCP. According to the Codex Elementarius Commission, food hygiene should cover all of these elements throughout the supply chain. All global food safety initiative benchmark standards have similar requirements for housekeeping and food hygiene. The supply chain involves primary production which includes environmental hygiene, 
hygienic production, handling storage, transport, cleaning maintenance and personal hygiene. Establishment design and facilities such as location, premises and rooms, equipment and facilities. Control of operation including food hazards, hygiene control systems, incoming materials, packaging, water management and supervision, documentation and records and all recall procedures. Establishment maintenance and sanitation includes maintenance and cleaning, cleaning programs, pest control systems, waste management and monitoring. Establishment personal hygiene involves health status, illness and injuries and personal cleanliness. Requirements, use and maintenance of transportation. Product information and consumer awareness and finally training to provide awareness and responsibilities. The cleaning procedure for the building, a component of the food hygiene procedure as also for the equipment should be validated using visual, analytical or microbiological methods and the record should be maintained. For instance, samples can be collected from the various areas of the equipment, floors, walls or drains so as to test for the presence of contamination. Then after applying a sanitation procedure, samples can be taken again and compared with the original results to ensure that the technique is effective at reducing harmful microbes to safe levels. For certain high risk materials like allergens, ruminant protein or ready to eat products, validation of procedure is mandated with individual governments. A comprehensive food hygiene and sanitation programs leaves nothing to chance. Responsibility should be designated for each parameter such as frequency of cleaning, chemicals used, concentrations, materials including color coded or segregated tools to prevent cross contamination of high risk materials. Verification records to ensure that Procedures are being carried out consistently and effectively. Acceptable limits for critical control points must also be scientifically established and maintained with regular monitoring. And training and communication throughout the organization with clear leadership from management on food, hygiene and sanitation. Moving on to our third module, we will discuss on the personal hygiene for staff members in the production areas in preparing for food or coming in touch with food and beverages. Workers must bathe daily as the body odor is offensive and skin is the main breeding ground for bacteria. Use of good quality soap is important so as to wash away sweat and dirt to emulsify secretions of the sebaceous glands and to make cleaning of skin easy. A good deodorant should be used after a bath and undergarments should be changed every day. Hair can also be a breeding ground for bacteria especially dandruff and lice both of which can make the scalp itch. Running hands through hair or scratching the scalp is a common habit but doing in close proximity to a place where food is being produced is a very unhealthy and unhygienic practice. It can be avoided if food handlers wear caps, scarves or use nets. This would discourage the employees from touching their scalp and contaminating food. Eyes must be clean and washed frequently. Rubbing of eyes should be avoided. An employee suffering from sore or infected eyes should not be allowed to work. 
teeth should be brushed regularly and thoroughly cleaned with a moderately hard brush. This should be done twice a day that is first thing in the morning and last thing before retiring to bed. This is important as food particles get lodged in the teeth and cause decay. Toothbrushes must be kept clean and should be changed frequently. The tongue tends to get coated and can be cleaned with a tongue cleaner. The mouth should be rinsed well and gargling is must after every meal. These habits ensure good dental health by preventing painful cavities and bad breath. Our hands are possibly the most unsafe serving equipment in the chain of infection in the entire food service operation. Bacteria flourish on the skin because of the ideal temperature conditions. Skin secretions provide food for growth and microbes get lodged in the pores, crevices and possibly cracks on the skin. Since our hands are in direct contact with food all the time, cross-contamination can occur and bacteria can be transferred to foods. To prevent these, hands should be washed before beginning work and after a break, before handling foods, after eating or smoking a cigarette, after using the toilet, after touching infected or unsanitary area of the body or combing hair, after using a handkerchief, sneezing or coughing into the hands, after scullery or any cleaning operation, after handling waste food or refuse and last but not the least, every hour while working in the kitchen. Hands should be washed with plenty of soap and water and preferably rinsed in running water. If soap tablets are used, they should be kept dry. Though liquid soap is most preferable as they are more hygienic and economical to use. Washing hands with antiseptic soap and water reduces the presence of coliform organisms, but some still remain and this is the reason why foods which favor growth and which cannot be heated before service should not be touched with bare hands. Fingernails can also be a frequent source of contamination or cross-contamination and thus should be trimmed and kept clean. Long nails with ragged edges tend to harbor more germs. Nail polish should be avoided in mass production areas as it may mass accumulated dirt or it could chip and enter the food. Some nail polishes are toxic. Care should be taken to ensure that worn jewelry does not come into contact with the food being prepared. Finger rings can accumulate dirt like dough accumulating in a ring while kneading which could later into the food. There is also the danger of stones which are used as a decorative for the jewellery falling into the food. Bangles and bracelets get heated soon and can interfere with the work. Wrist watches should not be worn in the kitchen as they can fall off or break and the glass particles may fall into the food, all of which adds up to the contamination of food. As most of the jobs in the catering establishments have to be performed standing, the feet of employees are subjected to extra stress and strain. So, extra attention should be given to the feet. Feet should be washed and kept clean, especially between the toes. Socks should always be worn with shoes to keep away dirt and perspiration. They should be washed daily. Shoes should be sturdy, clean, well polished and form a part of the uniform. They should be comfortable and well fitting with a low heel. Shoes are also necessary for protection of the feet against falling objects and spills. All employees working in a food establishment must wear 
clean and appropriate uniform while on duty. Uniform should be such that it protects the grease and vapors from the work environment. It should be to safe wear and it must protect the food from any kind bacteria. It should be large enough to ensure that food will not come into contact with any clothes worn underneath. The choice of uniform will vary for different areas of work. It should be so designed that it helps the worker perform efficiently. It should be light, comfortable and durable and should be made from absorbent material. It should be easy to wash and must be laundered and changed daily. White or light colors are selected as stains show up readily on them and thus will have to be changed frequently. Now let us have a look at a chef's uniform in the kitchen. The uniform is white in color made of heavy duty cotton and includes a double breasted chef coat with full sleeves, a large white apron tied around the waist, a scarf around the neck, a chef cap, black and white checked trousers and shoes and socks. The double breasted chef coat with long sleeves and apron protects the body and arms from hot splashes. The chef's cap allows for circulation of air to the head. A cap also prevents loose hair and dandruff from falling on food and absorbs perspiration from the forehead. Dishwashers and butchers will need waterproof aprons made of rubber sheeting or canvas. Cleaners are not given white uniforms as they are difficult to maintain. Blue or khaki colors will be more suitable for them. In the food service area, the color of the uniform should blend with the color scheme of the restaurant. Moving on to the fourth module, which speaks about personal hygiene for staff coming in touch with guests. All persons, including service staff such as waiters, working in a retail food establishment should practice good personal and food hygiene to ensure that food served to customers is safe for consumption. According to the Environmental Health Department, National Environment Agency Singapore, food handling and personal hygiene practices may also influence patrons' decisions in revisiting the food establishment. The following guidelines inform food establishment operators and service staff of the good hygiene practices that should be adopted. The first criteria is the health status of service staff. Operators of food establishment should ensure that all service staff are free from any symptoms of illness. Service staff who are ill could contaminate the food served and spread diseases to patrons through their contact with the food. For example, coughing or sneezing on to cooked or ready to eat food, touching cooked or ready to eat food with bare hands and not washing their hands thoroughly after using the toilet. Service staff should inform their supervisors if they are feeling unwell. Supervisors should ask staff who is feeling unwell to see a doctor immediately. Supervisors should only allow service staff to come into contact with cooked food and serving utensils 48 hours after the cessation of illness. Service staff should cover their cuts and sores completely with brightly colored waterproof dressing. On personal hygiene, operators of food establishment should ensure that all service staff put on clean clothes and follow good personal hygiene practices to prevent the contamination of food. Some good personal hygiene practices that service staff should adopt include wear clean, proper 
and tidy attire when they are at work. The attire should be changed on a daily basis or when they are soiled. Keep their fingernails short and clean and not put on nail polish or fake fingernails. Bacteria harbored under fingernails can get into food when fingernails come into contact with food. Do not wear accessories or jewellery as they may drop into the food. Such articles could also trap food debris that can contaminate the food. Keep hair and beard neat and tidy. Long hair should be tied up using hair caps. Effective hand washing is important to help prevent harmful bacteria from spreading from hands or arms to food, work surfaces, utensils and equipment. Hands and exposed portions of arms must be washed thoroughly with soap and water before starting work and especially after visiting toilet, after taking a break, after handling money, before and after serving food, after coughing, sneezing, eating or drinking, after handling rubbish and after cleaning work such as clearing plates, wiping tables and clearing food mess. Operators of food establishments are to ensure that there is dedicated non-hand operated hand washing sinks for service staff to carry out the following proper hand washing steps wherein are shown in the images. Wetting the hands with clean running water and applying soap. Rub palms together to make lather. Scrub in between the fingers. Scrub the back of your hands. Scrub your thumbs. Scrub your palms. Scrub your nails and fingertips. Scrub your wrist and rinse and dry your hands with paper towel. Hand sanitizers should be provided within the refreshment area for service staff to disinfect their hands regularly. Soiled hands, however, would need to be cleaned with soap and water before the use of hand sanitizer. To prevent the contamination of food or food contact surfaces, staff should not do any of the following when handling or serving food. Smoke spit, pick nose, clean ears with fingers, wipe hands on a dirty cloth, comb or touch hair and wipe off perspiration with bare hands. Our fifth module is on food handling and servicing practices. These are important as operators of food establishments should ensure that all service staff are aware of and follow proper food handling and servicing practices to prevent contamination of food. The service staff should turn away from food and cover their noses and mouths with tissue paper or handkerchiefs when sneezing or coughing. Wash their hands thoroughly after sneezing or coughing. They should not touch cooked or ready to serve food with bare hands when serving food. Care should be taken to ensure that their thumbs or fingers are not in contact with the food. They should always use tongs, ladles or spoons to handle cooked, ready to eat food or cut fruits when necessary. Wear disposable gloves when handling cooked, ready to eat food or cut fruits. Discard the gloves after each use. Crockery and utensils should be held by the base, handle or areas that are not in contact with food. Ensure that crockery and utensils are not dirty, chipped, broken or cracked. Do not touch the inside and rim of cups or glasses. Use a food tray when serving drinks. Staff should not use bare hands to handle or place ice into glasses. Always use tongs, scoops or other ice dispensing utensils 
or equipment to handle ice. Provide serving spoons to guests who are sharing dishes. Do not serve cooked or ready to eat food which has dropped on the floor or exposed to contaminants and keep the dining environment clean. To conclude this session, as with other areas of food safety, gathering of knowledge as also spreading awareness about the importance of sanitation and food hygiene should be done in a proactive manner. End product testing is important, but a positive result in the end product does not tell you whether the food is contaminated and if so, where the contamination originated. The overall food hygiene system when applied at each point in the supply chain is about managing risk before they result in a case of food contamination. Using common sense and food science based approaches, a well designed food hygiene program can provide for proactive responses and risk mitigation from farm to fork.